I've got a question for you, uh, a question that I've asked many, many people over the years, and I want to ask it of you today. If you stood before God today, right now, and God asked you this question, why should I let you into heaven? What would you say? Think about that for a second. Why would God let me into heaven? It's not just a conversation starter. It's maybe the most important question you or I could be asked because our answer determines how and where we'll spend eternity. You know, that forever part of every man and woman's existence. Why should I let you in? Most of the people I've asked that to give me an answer that sounds kind of like this. Well, I'm trying really, really hard. I'm doing my best. I love my fellow man most of the time. I'm a good person. Or how about this? I believe in God. After those answers, I'll take the time, if they permit me, to explain that God is what God is looking for from us, to have eternal life with Him in heaven. And when I say, well, those are good things that you said, but what if I told you that God would answer you, but they're not good enough? If God let any of us into heaven because of our goodness, we would have to ask, well, what reaches that level where, where it's good enough? The Bible, which is God's word, makes it clear that we have a problem, all of us, with goodness. And that problem is our own propensity for doing the opposite of what is good. The Bible calls it sin. It is violating any of God's commands. It's living our lives, practicing our habits, even thinking thoughts that don't hold up to God's standard of what is right and holy. We're told by God and by our own consciences, if we're honest, that reaching such a high level of good by our own efforts is not just hard, not just unsure, but it's really impossible. Listen to these words that were written by a Jesus follower in the first century, a man by the name of Paul. Paul wrote these words. He said, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And grace, what is that? By his grace. Grace is something we are given that we don't earn, that we don't deserve. God saved you by his grace, and you don't take, you can't take credit for that. He said it's a gift from God. Salvation's not a reward, Paul wrote. For the good things we've done, so none of us can boast about it. So really, God's not looking for me to tell him how much I've done for good and, and how much I've done that is good. He's provided everything I need to become part of his eternal family. And that's simply by trusting. That's what the word faith or believe means, by trusting in his provision for me and for you. And that provision is only found in one person, and that's Jesus Christ. Earlier in Paul's life, he was asked this question by a man who was about to end his own life. He said to Paul and his counterpart, uh, Silas, he said, he said, what must I do to be saved? What do I have to do? And the answer he was given by Paul and Silas, they said, believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. Just believe. It's the same word in the Greek that Paul spoke and wrote as the word trust. You simply put your total trust in Jesus Christ and what he did for you when he was crucified. Because he was and is God's one and only provision for us to have God's eternal life. And anything but trust in Christ, anything but trust in Christ alone is trust in something else or someone else. And there's the correct answer to that question from God. God, I believed. I put my total trust in your son, Jesus. It's that simple. If this helps you, and I hope it does, to know that you have everlasting life in Christ or how you can, I'd love to hear from you. And you can comment here, or you can send an email to info at nagsheadchurch.org. God bless you.